walking in the house in my room, gotta make her put it on. She don't like when it cold, just left car cold. No Carolina, I was licking on booty in the whole lot of vagina. Eat a booze with some ice cream, she'll remember you. Ice cube, make a gym, she ever like the one do. Do see me with the crew, I bet get some food. I see you looking like a dude. Had to make a move, make a move. What up, y'all? Snade Almighty, aka the Global Dark Skin Ambassador, with another epic, epic, epic hood story. Now, this is a this is a two part story. I'm probably gonna have both. I'm probably just gonna have both of these in this one video. But this is a story about how this is a story about it's kind of a three parter. But this is a story about how. We almost caught the op slipping. Especially me, because I was closest to him. Almost caught the op slipping, right? In front of his mother. But I let him pass. I let him pass. Which ended up... Which ended up with him... Letting me and my boys pass when he caught us slipping. When he caught us slipping, right? And I'm gonna explain, I'm gonna explain how this went. And it's a thing where me and this guy, we never spoke about it, but it was a look we gave each other to where we knew exactly, it was like I knew exactly that he know that I let him rock. And that's why when he was in a position, but he could have did me and my boys filthy because they had us dead to rights. They had us outnumbered. We was in their territory, slipping, right? But I'm going to go into detail. Uh, go ahead, hit the like button. Subscribe if you're new. Just pay, follow along. You're going to want to watch this to the end. You know what I'm saying? Um, but now, we're going to take it back. This was, this was after I already came home from prison. And I still had like a foot and a couple toes in the streets, like for real, for real. Now, this was, this was, this could be right after the federal indictment came, you know, that locked, you know, like Melly Mel and everybody up, right? This could be like, this might've been the same year. This is either right before that happened or right after, right? So, so it's already known. The Browns, Park Avenue, Colin Avenue, drop YG. Not YG no more, you know what I'm saying? Before that, before that, we was YGFC, you know what I'm saying? It, it was, it was a lot of camaraderie. But then things change, right? Things change. I'm not going to get into detail with that. It's it's really irrelevant to the situation. But I wanted to give just a little bit of a backstory, right? So we beefing. We went from being cool to beefing with a couple of the gunners who live two blocks up on one six third, right? We on one six first, they on one six third. We went from being cool with them to beefing with them. Not because it was done personal, strictly just because, just because they was YG. Now, with me, it was on site with all of them because my man Devin and Spook Killer had just came home. This was 2012, and they jumped him. Just because he was GFC, he didn't know none of them, none of that. Mind you, mind you, it was it was it was a brother named Jeezy, right? Who was YG, who we was cool with, who was from that area, and this was before all the drama and all of that 
we was cool with Jeezy, you know what I'm saying? Jeezy used to, he used to walk, walk to the Browns, chop it up with us. Like it was, it was love, you know what I'm saying? It was, it was love, you feel me? But once lines get drawn in the sand, it was what it was. And with me, I was like, yo, all right, it's on site with all y'all. Y'all jumped my best friend. He just came home. He don't know none of y'all. All y'all did was ask him, hey, yo, you, you GFC, you OGs? He said, yeah, and then niggas jumped him, you feel me? It was on after that, right? But mind you, we all live way too close to each other. So it's like, it was on, but in a certain way, both sides wasn't beast and beast and beast and do nothing to each other because we live mad close. And it, 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 it would end badly for everybody very fast with either somebody getting killed or somebody going to jail. So there was situations that happened beyond fists, beyond Mary Fistmas that happened. But for the most part, it was stairs. And it was, if I catch you on this side, you get spanked. It was mostly that, right? So on a particular day, on a particular day, we was all in the front. It was a nice, hot summer day, right? So we all posted in the front. We all posted in front of the Browns, front of our building and all that. Um, some of us, well, the, you know, the, the older dudes doing whatever they're doing across the street. They ain't got nothing to do with us, right? But we across the street from the store, and we in the store side, which across the street from my building, if you go further down the block towards, like, uh, the courtyard, right, in the corner of Park Avenue, there's a Monteferi, like, small Monteferi hospital. So on this particular day, it's me. It's, like, two, three of us. It's like two, three of us, right? We in the front. Now, who we see coming down 163rd way towards 161st was one of the gunners, right? So, one of the gunners, you feel me? So, he walking with this woman. And this is an older woman. An older woman look just like him, right? So, they walking towards Monteferi. They walking towards Monteferi, right? So, we see him. Couple dudes is like, yo, you know, saying derogatory terms towards YG, you know what I'm saying? Stuff like that. And the dude is like, he looking at us, but he's like, he has some type of concern in his face, you know, because see, I'm I'm from an area where, you know, if it's on, you know, dudes so ratchet, they give it to your mother too. Like niggas will knock your sister out. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, like, like one of my men's spit on a nigga baby before. You feel me? Who was the op? You know what I'm saying? Like, violated dude, pissed whipped them, spit on his baby. Like, these type of things happen, you know what I'm saying? But it's me who jumped in the front line, and I start crossing the street first. Even though I'm moving at a at a, at a quick enough pace, it kind of feels like it's slow motion. So as I'm getting closer, because see me, me, I got a blade on me. I'm about to cut him or whatever. So as I get closer, I hear him talk to the lady he like, ma, you on the wrong side of the street. So he kind of was like, I realized that's his mother. He was gone, his mother. I get close. I cross the street. I slow down and I let them walk past me. And they walk right into Monteferi, right? Now, mind you, Deuce is waiting for him to come out. He never, I don't know, maybe he went out another exit, something like that. I don't know. But I let him go. And my man was like, yo, bro, why you ain't? I'm like, yo, he with his mom. Man. He's like, yo, real niggas don't do what I'm supposed to do. Violate him in front of his mom. She gonna tell, right? But in all the reality, I'm like, that's just not a code that I rock with. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm not, 
I'm not gonna involve your mother in this. Cause say I do something to you and what? Your mother try to attack me? Now what? I gotta punch your mother in the face? That's just not me. Like I'm not a, I'm not a predator of women. You feel me? Like that's just not me. And I'm glad I got there before my mans cause my mans would have violated him and duffed his mother out. You feel me? But mind you, that situation happens don't see the dude again, right? So now you fast forward a couple months. Me, two of my mans, we, I don't know. We caught a jokes or something. We selling some type of electronic and we walking around to the couple little pawn shops in our area, right? So me, I got no type of weapon on me at all, right? No type of weapon on me at all. My man's got a knife on him, knife, blade type of thing. And then my other man's a little bit younger than us. You know what I'm saying? We go to this pawn shop that's close to Maria Lopez. Now, if you're familiar with the history of Maria Lowe and Cortland, if you know, you know, it ain't too much to say there, but that's the op territory pretty much, you know what I'm saying? The op territory, right? So we like so, we don't care. It's early in the day. Usually, usually the, the street punks and the thugs, they don't come out till a little bit later in the day. So we're like, yo man, we out. Worst case scenario, worst case scenario, we gonna pop the bottle off. We see a gun, we running, right? So we in the pawn shop. My man trying to sell this thing. And in walks six tall ass young gunners, right? And I notice the first dude that walks in, I already know of that was the gunner from 163rd. So it was the gunner from 163rd, one of, one of his mans, right? And then it's a couple other dudes who presumably they from the real low, right? So. I noticed him first. Me and the dude, we exchanged eye contact, right? And the the tension is thick. The tension is thick, you know what I'm saying? Cause it's like, somebody knew somebody. Somebody knew somebody. And it kind of looked like they were sizing us up. We were sizing them up. Mind you, it was only like three of us. So for every one of us, it was two of us, right? So. We sizing each other up. I see my man, he reaching in his pocket, like he ready to do something. I look at the dude and I'm like, hey bro, you look familiar. Where you from? He like, I don't know where you from. I'm like, don't worry about that bro. Where you from? He like, I'm from 163rd and Morris. Now at that current point in time, I could have chose to be very ignorant. Cause see, I'm I'm weighing out all the options, right? So I'm like, I already knew where he was from. He know I know. He looked me directly in the face when I was about to violate him in front of his mother, right? But I let it slide, I let him rock, right? Right? I'm like, I can pop it off inside this pawn shop right here. We're gonna go to jail. We're gonna go to jail, right? I could pop it off. We fight our way outside of the pawn shop. Make our way outside the pawn shop, trying to avoid police. It's dudes already on their phone in here. They could be talking to anybody. All they gotta do is send a text. And niggas from a real low, they just a hop, step, skip away. And it'll go from us being outnumbered six to three to 15, 20 to three. We're likely to die in broad daylight today, right? But in the heat of the pressure, I kept a cool face and I said, a word, bet. That's what's up. My man's handled his transaction. I gave him a look, like, yo, let's get the fuck out of here, right? 
I, I know this dude man's walked up to him. They said something, something, something. I didn't really hear what they said. But he said something along the lines of, they good. Something like that. Like, I don't, he looked familiar, but I don't know who he is. But I know he knew who I was. And we all walking out the store. And while we all walking back, I'm walking out the store. I look back at dude. And he didn't go like this, like, what up? But he gave me a look like, yeah. Y'all was going to die today. And the look was like, because you let me rock, I let you rock. Next time I see you, whatever, 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 you know what I'm saying? But he let us rock, and he really had the power, right, to have us killed that day. Because, listen, it's... This is real serious situations. People was going to the feds over this and still like beating each other up, jumping each other, cutting each other up, you know what I'm saying? Shooting at each other. Like it was like crazy. Like it was like a real life situation. And that man chose to not make it hot. He could have been like, I don't care. He chose not violate me in front of my mother. He was about to. Yo, let's get this nigga, right? But he chose not to. And maybe like a year later, I'm on the train. I'm on the train and I see him again. We look at each other. We go like this. And I walk to the opposite side of the train. Sat in the corner just in case, you know, just in case maybe he's gonna try some, I have enough space to, to maneuver around, you feel me? In a situation, see if he win anybody else. But we gave each other one of these. Then I said another word to each other. That was the last time I seen that man. And that's a situation where I'm like, the streets is crazy. You could really be gone in the blink of an eye. We was already trying our luck going to the pawn shop in the op territory. Then the ops walk in. All it took was for the dude to say out loud, yo, these niggas was trying to violate me when I was with my moms and all that. They done went hard on us. But you know, that's how that story ends. Like, share, comment, subscribe. The Everyone is Toxic podcast is coming. Follow the link in the top corner. Tell all of my Rankin's Island stories and her stories. Y'all let me know what y'all think about this story, man, in the comment section. Like, share, comment, subscribe. Peace.